Good evening. Uh, my name is Patrick Lecomte. Uh, I'm executive director of um, ESSEC Advanced Master in Financial Techniques. Thanks for coming tonight for this presentation about working investment banking. Um, one of the reasons I decided to uh, give this presentation in Singapore is that ESSEC is uh, um, very successfully um, delivering a program in financial techniques here in, uh, in Asia, in Singapore. So we'll talk about it at the end of the presentation. But uh, in terms of the presentation today, actually, why you are here, as I said, um, my expertise is about investment banking. I joined ESSEC in 2008. Before that, I was in the US, I had a background in finance. Um, and my, my job is basically to recruit and train students to work in investment banking. Um, the program I run here in Asia is relatively small. We are not uh, running a large program with lots of students. Each year we have between 20 and 30 students at most. Why do we have such a, a, a small program? Because actually when students join ESSEC, uh, usually they don't have a background in finance. And within one year they have to learn, to learn everything about finance and at the same time they have to find a job. Because um, very soon, actually when you join a master's program, you're on the job market. I would say at ESSEC, you are on the job market even before you join the program. Because the first thing that students do in my, in my, uh, in my master is actually to follow a seminar uh, for application, uh, job application uh, in London. Because the program, as we will see, starts in France. So based on all that and the experience of ESSEC over, those, over 25 years, we have developed a lot of expertise in terms of uh, investment banking. How do they work? What kind of profiles are they looking to recruit? Uh, what are the, basically the, the skills that are, they are um, looking for different types of jobs? Um, and also, uh, as we will see in the presentation, um, when, when I recruit the students, I spend a lot of time to make sure that uh, the students will be able to find a job within one year, uh, because uh, the market is what it is. It's not so easy right now in investment banking. So it's a big move, actually, for people who have a quantitative background, like engineering or mathematics or statistics, to decide to do finance. So we really try to keep in touch with the market, to be on, on, you know, on top of the market so that the students can know exactly uh, what to expect. So the presentation today will give you um, a broad overview of investment banking. What are the main divisions of investment banking? And the focus is really, um, I would say financial markets, because this is what I do um, best uh, in the program. The program is about financial markets. And I will tell you what the different divisions uh, actually do uh, um, among investment banks. Why, what you as a young graduate or an analyst, you can expect to do in those divisions. What, the, what skills uh, the banks are looking for. So it seems pretty generic when you go on the website of the bank. You know, they look for, for more or less always the same skills. But actually, depending on the job, the set, skill, the set of skills are very different. Um, and the presentation, as I said, is based on the experience we've accumulated over the years. And ESSEC is very good in career services and student coaching. So we always try to um, update uh, to make sure that the students benefit from, from this, uh, I would say, insider's knowledge. So how, how many of you know about investment banking? How many of you come from investment banking background? Nobody? How many of you have done an internship in banking before? Nobody? Okay. So basically, if you go on the website of what I would, I would call the most prestigious investment bank in the world, at least for, for most of my students, namely Goldman Sachs, uh, if you look at, at the way they are organized, usually there are four different divisions. The first one will be uh, security services. Uh, and Students who do a master's program usually don't work in security services. Um, second one will be about trading and principal investment, debts and equities. And that would be, um, I would say, a major part of potential jobs for, 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 for students at ESSEC. The third one will be about investment banking, uh, which is more about corporate finance, merger and acquisition. And the fourth one will be about asset and wealth management. As I said, most of the students who usually do a master in financial techniques are looking for position in trading and principal investment, sometimes in investment banking. Increasingly over the years, because of the situation of the investment banking industry, students have moved also towards more asset and waste management position, which is quite interesting in Singapore, because as you know, Singapore is a center for waste management. But today I will focus on those two, trading, principal investment, and investment banking. 
if you look actually as, at this uh, pie chart, you see in the middle we have corporate functions. What does it mean? Actually, an investment bank is a company. It, it's, it's run like a company, so they need services to support those activities. So we are talking about HR, we are talking about uh, financial management, we are talking about uh, IT, and IT is a very large component of investment banking. We are also talking uh, potentially about risk management. Although risk management nowadays uh, have moved more from the core of the company towards uh, the activities, but definitely it's a large part of, of the, uh, the way investment bank um, work. So if you, um, if you work in an investment bank, there are four main activities that you might, be, um, uh, you might be doing. The first one will be corporate finance, so this is investment banking per se. Uh, so it's about financial advisory and advice on m and I will go into the details. The second uh, activity you might do actually is about capital raising, and there are two ways of raising capital for, for, um, for investment bank. The first one would be uh, accessing the debt market, so it's everything related to fixed income. And the second one will be about equity market, so basically raising equity uh, on the stock market. The third activity will be about sales and trading, and you can do sales and trading either in fixed income, in debt market, or in equity capital market. And the last one, which is um, very important as well in terms of supporting the other activities, will be about research. And you can do, again, research on debt capital market or on equity capital markets. So we'll start with corporate finance. Corporate finance is really uh, the core of investment banking. I'm sure all of you, you have heard about merger and acquisition, you have heard about um, banks uh, such as Goldman Sachs giving advice to, uh, uh, to, to a Singaporean company looking for an acquisition in Europe or for a French company looking for an acquisition in Asia. So those things will make the headlines uh, in, the, in the financial press. So what does corporate finance mean really? It's really about um, looking at uh, a company and giving advice about either the financial structure, so which is about funding the activity of the company, or the ownership. So if we are talking about ownership, we are talking about merger and acquisitions, and there are very many variations actually in terms of merger and acquisitions. There are many ways of doing that. And corporate finance within the investment bank can represent either the defending company or the acquiring company. So in the example I took before, if you are talking about a Singaporean company, like a telco company, uh, let's say Singtel, looking for an acquisition in, let's say, in Europe, uh, in Germany, um, well, the German company will work with an investment bank and Singtel will work with an investment bank. And those two will basically um, liaise and negotiate the deal on behalf of the clients. Um, it can be also about management buyout and joint ventures. Uh, do you know the meaning of management buyout? It's basically when the management of a company decides to buy the company. So they are buying out the company. Uh, so usually it involves a lot of leverage, meaning a lot of uh, uh, external funding. Um, but also investment, if you work in corporate finance and investment banking, you can very simply give, um, I would say, financial advice to corporate clients. Financial advice to corporate clients will be about uh, really funding decisions, whether you have, you, you, it's, it's, time, it's timely to issue more equity or to issue more debt. Most banks nowadays will see this activity as um, extremely international, so they will have centers in, in, in various um, financial centers worldwide, uh, New York, of course, London, Tokyo, Singapore, Hong Kong, Shanghai, and so forth. So um, what is the organization, the structure of a corporate finance department within an investment bank? Usually there is a team in charge of what they call the corporate advisory group, and those guys are specialized in a certain type of transactions. Then you have the specialist industry group, and those guys are specialized in a specific industry. And you have people expert in equity capital markets and people expert in debt capital markets. So how does it work? Suppose again that you are Singaporean, let's say Singtel, looking for an acquisition in Germany. Um, so depending on who, um, I mean which group was approached first, um, within the structure of the investment bank, basically, a team will be um, um, uh, um, uh, a team will be uh, set up to deal um, to take care of the deal. So, for instance, in that case, we are talking about telecom and media. We are talking about M and A. So, people from those two groups will work together. 
So basically, usually depending on the, on the level, uh, there would be somebody who is expert in the industry, somebody who is expert in the deal, and they do like a sandwich like that. And um, then the, the decision has to be made about the way to fund the deal, whether it's equity funded by equity or funded by, by more debt. So in that case, uh, one of those two groups will be involved. Um, so basically, if you work in corporate finance and investment bank, you do a lot of teamwork. Uh, because you have to work with people with different set of skills. So it's very interesting. Um, uh, it used to be very prestigious for students of this master to do that, to work in M&A. Um, the issue is that it can be also quite cyclical, so it depends uh, on, on the state of the economy, and you might um, end up in a team where people are actually uh, um, asked kindly to leave because there is not enough deal to support the activity. So it's not always sustainable. Uh, if you work as a graduate in corporate finance, what will you do? Uh, for instance, if a client of the bank wants to make an acquisition, uh, you as an analyst, you will evaluate potential candidates. So I mentioned Singtel willing to make an acquisition. In that case, very simply, as an analyst, you will look at potential targets, potential companies. I mentioned Germany that might be interesting uh, for Singtel. Uh, to take over in Germany, in Europe. Um, corporate finance will pitch a client um, an ID. Uh, for instance, if Singtel doesn't have the ID, that might be potential for them to uh, take over a company in Europe. Then, you know, the investment bank might approach uh, the CFO at Singtel and say, uh, well, actually, we think that it would be a good idea for you to look at companies in Europe. Um, then you might be involved in uh, valuing an acquisition. And this would be um, I would say the most uh, tricky part, uh, because you have to run an analysis in terms of previous transactions and making forecasts about future cash flows. Um, and of course, you have decisions linked to um, a more financial advisory about uh, funding decisions. So for instance, how much a client can add uh, in terms of leverage uh, on, on, on its balance sheet. So um, when you start, really, um, uh, in that field, really what you do is a lot of number crunching. Uh, when, I, when I talk to people who work in large investment bank and started in, in, in corporate finance, um, in IB per se, usually, um, I would say during the first two years, uh, all they do is dealing with a lot of spreadsheets, a lot of numbers, you are running a lot of models. But now the uh, other activity where you can work is about debt capital markets. So if you work in debt capital markets, there are several um, uh, activities uh, you might get involved with. The first one would be about origination, Second one would be about sales and trading, and the third one would be about research. Um, in terms of uh, what, that, what does a debt capital market mean, really? Very simply, debt capital market covers everything which is linked to fixed income. So it can be, um, it can be a, a debt issued by government or a debt issued by companies. In terms of activities which are covered, so I mentioned uh, actually all the uh, um, debt issued by government and companies, so basically what we call fixed income or interest rate products, but there are many variations in terms of different instruments. So they can be uh, uh, domestic from domestic markets, international markets, emerging market, distressed uh, high yield market, or what we used to call junk bonds. Uh, floating rate notes or commercial papers, so all kinds of different fixed income instruments. Also, usually, DCM will cover commodities. So commodities um, will, um, I mean, can be electricity, natural gas, oil, metals, sub-commodities, agricultural commodities, I mean, the range is, is very vast. Um, also, credit products, structured products, securitization, collateralized, debt obligation, credit derivatives, but also currency products, forex, their derivative, and currency swaps. So you see there is a large range of financial instruments, actually, uh, which are covered uh, by uh, this uh, acronym DCM. It's very important, actually, that uh, people who are interested in investment banking know the meaning of those acronyms. Why? Because when you apply online to those investment banks, they ask you, where would you like to work? Would you like to work in DCM? Would you like to work in ECM? So you, you need to know, actually, what you like, where you can excel. What is the difference between debt capital market and other financial instruments, like equity capital markets, actually? The main difference is that usually people who go in, in DCM tend to be a little bit more technical. So because you have to deal with lots of macroeconomic variable, 
usually it's the models are quite quantitative, so people tend to be more technical, people working in those fields. People working in commodities usually have a keen interest in commodities market. Uh, they are very interested in the oil market, maybe because they have background in engineers, uh, you know, engineering, uh, oil engineering, or they are very interested in, uh, in soft commodities because uh, maybe they did an internship working for Nestle or one of those large companies. So you need to know actually where you would like to work when you apply. Uh, in terms of structure uh, of the departments, the typical structure is very simply um, organized by product. So, in, so first one, first group will be derivative and switch products. Then you have people who are working in syndication. So syndication means origination. So origination actually means creating new instruments, bringing new instruments to the market. Then people who might uh, work in research, might work in sales, <coughs> or might work in trading. So you, as, a, as an analyst, you can work in any of those um, uh, sub subgroup within the DCM department. <coughs> what would you do? Uh, as a young graduate. Um, well, you can get involved in a syndicate in charge of pricing a new issue. Um, you can get involved in structuring uh, a deal for a client. You can get involved with a sales and trading team because they need to expand. It's very unlikely when you start that you're going to be able to uh, talk directly to clients or trade your own book. It takes time. You have to build confidence. Uh, of course, it depends on the team, it depends on the desk, on the culture, but usually uh, you are assisting a team of, 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 of uh, sales and, and traders. Or you can work in research. Uh, basically, again, you will run a lot of spreadsheet initially and you will assist an experienced researcher. Um, the key players, so you see, um, we, we have, um, I would say, more diverse names in terms of origin than before. Um, so those numbers are for 2012. Uh, in terms of debt capital market, and the market is a, is a less um, is a lot less oligopolistic than for uh, M and A. You have lots of um, you know lots of players. Uh, in 2012, the largest players were JP Morgan. Um, so it's a, it's a, it's a very uh, of course it's a very international uh, business as well. Uh, now uh, the third activity or group uh, you can work in an investment bank will be about ECM. So ECM means equity capital market. So like before, if you work in ECM, you can work in uh, originating new instruments, you can work in sales and trading, or you can work in research. Um, if you are working, um, actually, uh, as, a, um, uh, as an analyst, um, you might get involved in any of those activities. Now, there is um, something that um, you have to be aware of, because uh, when you apply online, maybe something that uh, you are exposed to. Um, ECMs cover more than just equity instruments. Convertible instruments uh, will be treated in most investment banks as equity and not uh, DCM, not debt. Um, so I mentioned before uh, the fact a company might decide to issue uh, more equity. So you can get involved in um, um, a secondary offering, basically when a company which is already listed is asking for more capital from the market. So this is what we call a secondary offering. Or you can get involved in what we call an IPO, so initial public offering, which means the first time a company is being listed uh, on the stock market. Those um, markets are becoming increasingly international, and, and we are in Asia, and we have seen in Asia a lot of foreign companies actually uh, being listed uh, in markets like Hong Kong and Singapore. Uh, I'm specializing in real estate finance, and in real estate we see a lot of companies uh, actually looking for listing in Asia. Why do they do that? Actually, they do that to have access to a pool of investors. So, because the markets give access to uh, potentially a larger um, group of, of, uh, of, uh, of investors. So, you see, when you work in ECM and you are involved in that, of course you work with people in corporate finance, because those decisions are linked to decisions taken uh, within the investment bank with people in corporate finance who are deciding with the CFO of the company, CEO of the company, actually to issue more equity, or to, to just to get, list on the to get listed on the market. In terms of organization of the uh, ECM division, you have derivative and social products, you have syndication, again, so origination of the, uh, of the instruments and pricing of the new issues, you have research, you have sales, you have program trading, and you have trading. Uh, what would you do as an analyst? Um, the client might uh, look for a structured transaction, so basically you will um, work with uh, structures uh, to create the appropriate structure. Um, 
usually people who do that uh, have a rather um, quantitative background. They tend to be more uh, from an engineering background when, when you're involved in structuring uh, uh, transactions. In terms of syndication, well, basically, as an analyst, you will do research on peer ratios for comparable companies, and you will interface with corporate finance, so people within the investment bank. Uh, you might work in research. So suppose there is a new sector uh, that the bank decides to cover, so you might get involved uh, in the team uh, in charge of covering this new, uh, this new sector. Uh, you might work as well with uh, salespeople. Usually, initially, you will work mostly as uh, an assistant sales, um, helping them to manage their clients. Uh, they might give you access to small accounts initially in order for you to develop some, some expertise. But people who work in sales are actually very careful about opening up their books of clients to, uh, to, to, to newbies, of course, because they don't want newbies to spoil the relationship, to damage the relationship. The, I mean, the credibility of, this, of, of, of a salesperson with a client is, is gold for the bank. So they won't take a chance with, with people who are just starting. Or you might work in trading and again, Mostly you will work on the desk as an assistant. Uh, sometimes when people do um, actually internship in trading, what we call summer internship in trading, uh, initially they just look, buy coffee and bring the lunch. It can happen, even in the most prestigious investment banks. Not because they want to treat you badly, because uh, of course not, otherwise you would not be doing, they would, you would not be there in the first place. But because you can't, they can't take a chance with you. So they want you to make sure that uh, you are learning by looking uh, basically, the activity of the desk, and then you have to prove that you can you can do it. Also, you might get involved. Actually, what happens with many of my students when they start in trading, usually they will get more like in support of traders by developing small applications, uh, small models for for the traders for, for improving the trading. Uh, in terms of key players, again, you have almost the same names always: Goldman Sachs, Citi, and you see as ECM as DCM basically, and it's a less a lot less oligopolistic than. Um, um, uh, corporate finance M&A, basically the, the pie is shared by many, many different banks. Um, so basically, if you work in investment banking, there are four or five roles that you can occupy. You can work in origination, so basically you are originating a uh, new business for the bank. You can work as a product specialist, so you are specialized in a certain type of debt instruments, a certain type of equity instruments, like a certain type of equity directive, a certain type of credit directive. You can work in research, you can work in sales, or you can work in trading. Usually, I would say when you apply, um, you don't have to be so specific in terms of what you want to do. Um, they won't tell you so much about, you know, um, um, oh, you, you decided to do sales so you can't do trading. You, know, you might have rotation, so you can choose during your internship. But still, you need a very precise idea of, you know, where you would fit best, because actually the skills necessary for all those different positions are very different, as we will see. So in terms of what investment banks are looking for, they're looking for people who are energetic, of course, enthusiastic, team player, willing to work all hours, ability to work under pressure, numerate. I would say many jobs actually are looking for those type of skills. Uh, consulting would look, look for skills like that. I would say most companies would look for those type of skills. There is one difference between those companies and investment bank, is that when they say working all hours, they actually mean it. Uh, even when you do an internship. Uh, one of my students started an internship in Singapore in one of those investment banks we had uh, before, one of the top investment banks, and actually started the internship on Monday morning. Uh, he was doing M&A, so he was doing corporate finance. And he went home for the first time on Thursday morning. And he was just starting. So it's, it's a commitment. You have to be prepared for that. Um, but beyond numeracy, you need to be articulate. Why do you need to be articulate in investment bank? Because there is a lot of the activity of investment bankers which is about selling ideas. You sell ideas to clients if you are sales, but also you sell ideas within the investment banks to your colleagues. If you are doing research, it's not good to be. A t it's not good enough to be a top researcher. You have to be able to sell your ideas, because if you don't sell your ideas, then the salespeople won't trust you basically, and they won't use your ideas for the clients of the bank to, do, to, to basically to bring business to the traders. So you need to be articulate. If you are definitely not articulate, then there are some types of jobs you might consider, but most of the jobs won't be appropriate. You need to be innovative, of course. Uh, every organization will say that. Uh, it used to be very true in investment banking because they were looking for people to come up with new products, a little less so 
uh, I would say nowadays. Problem solver definitely, seek new ideas, need to be driven, you need to be a high performer, and difficult to achieve, you need to be confident, but never ever arrogant. Uh, in terms of required skills, so on this slide, you are basically for the different types of jobs, the skills that were identified uh, for, I would say, the ideal candidate uh, for each type of job. So if you do sales, you need to be outgoing, persuasive, to be able to build relationship. But also you need to be effective and to be persistent in your partnership with clients. Uh, and the clients are not just, uh, I mean, you're not selling soap. You are dealing with uh, banks, asset managers, hedge funds. You need to be numerate and analytical as well. You need to be articulate because you need to sell your ideas. Um, in the past, uh, for instance, in the city, where, in the city of London where many of my students uh, end up working, uh, it was very easy to be sales. Basically, you had to invite your clients for lunch. Uh, you, you bought them a nice lunch, and it was enough uh, to get business. And they would call you, and you know you would get the, the deals, the trades. Not anymore. It doesn't work like that anymore. Actually, if you want to work in sales, you are not worse than somebody who is doing trading. You are as good, but your set of skills are different. And in terms of technicalities, you need to be almost as technical as somebody doing trading. Because you, you need to... Um, uh, basically project the expertise of the bank and to do that depending on the products you're in charge of you, you need to be an expert in your field um, you can do trading as well um, so you need to be a quick thinker you need to be very focused you need to be very analytical you need to be very resilient accountable as well why accountable because they want to avoid the case of uh, rock traders basically uh, you know going going uh, on their own and manipulating the systems to, uh, to avoid, uh, to avoid the, the controls. Uh, so basically, uh, nowadays it's very important that you are accountable. And if you, if you want to work in trading, they will test it. They have their own ways using tests to make sure that your profile will fit. If they see any trace of deviancy in your behavior, that you have a tendency to take shortcuts, maybe you won't be qualified for trading. Um, and especially these days, because traders have to deal with a lot of control from risk managers. Uh, if you want to work in trading, uh, also you have to be accountable, you need to be able to work independently. And of course you need to know the liquidity of the market. So I would say people who work in trading usually they have a passion for the, for the market. They really have a passion for the financial markets, uh, or for the segment of the market they work on. If you don't have the passion for the market, very, very soon you will get burnt out. It can be an exhausting job. Um, many students do work in structuring as well. Um, so when you structure, basically, you are designing instruments. You are combining different instruments to answer a specific need for a client. So it's like engineering using financial instruments. So if you work in structuring, you need to be, I would say, you need to have an engineering background, but you need to have an engineer background. So you need to be um, creative, innovative, Usually, you need to be quite technical in terms of, of um, your, your skills. Definitely more technical than people working in sales. Uh, you need to be able to work with pricing models, but also you need to have strong communication skills. Why? Because you need to sell your structure, um, basically, internally uh, to people within the investment bank who will ultimately um, uh, sell it to the clients. So it's important that it's not enough to be good at designing these instruments. You need to convince people, actually, that this is the right instrument for, for the client. Then you can work in investment banking, so basically the M&A jobs I mentioned before, corporate finance jobs. So it would be similar to sales, so I would say less technical, um, and you need to be able to build corporate relationship to work in teams. Um, it's more or less a job like a consulting job, uh, basically they are looking for people who are all rounded, um, can, be many dif can do many different things, uh, who are numerate, analytical, um, so, um, yeah, if you work, in, if you are, if you work in, in M&A, for instance, although initially you will do a lot of number crunching and all that, um, yeah, you need, you need to be able to send a good image uh, of the bank to potential clients. So it's, a, it's a, yeah, almost a consultant profile. And last but not least, and very few students at ESSEC actually do that, you can work as a quant analyst. Uh, as analyst. Why very few people actually do that at ESSEC? Because uh, if you want to do work as a quant, you need a lot more than a master's degree in financial engineering. Um, I would say you would you need a PhD, um, either a PhD um, in economics or a PhD in, uh, in uh, very quantitative topics like physics, for instance. Um, 
so if, if you want to work as a quant, uh, you need good coordinability, you need, um, again, you'll be able to communicate, able to spot patterns, cause and effect, and so forth. But m beyond that, you really need a, a postmaster level qualification. So what about ESSEC? I mean, how do we fit into all that? Actually, we fit very well into this, uh, this environment of investment banking. I explain why. Because we started the program 25 years ago, uh, in 1985, when France was going through the big banks. So arrival of new types of financial instruments. And ESSEC has been a very consistent in training, uh, um, I would say, top students from top schools, initially mostly from France, then increasingly from Europe, and now, I would say, globally. Um, basically, students who don't have a background in finance, and we train them to, uh, within one year, become experts uh, in financial instruments. The program is really designed um, based on financial instruments, more than skills, you learn about financial products. Um, so we are very well ranked, we are number two in the world, de facto we are number one in Asia, uh, and we are very well known actually for that, for international cross experience and international mobility. What does it mean? It means actually that uh, in my group this year I have students uh, from India uh, who never went out of India, and actually they are working now in London. So it's a, it's a very international kind of uh, uh, work experience, or we have French people working in, uh, in Hong Kong. Uh, so we have a lot of international, mo international mobility. Uh, but we have students working in New York, students working uh, in Shanghai, students working in Germany, uh, in Geneva, especially if you want to work in commodities, lots of students work in Switzerland, and um, of course in France. Um, so it's, a, it's, a, yeah, it's one of the characteristics of this program. Uh, it's just, uh, I mean, we are based in, uh, in Singapore, we're a French school, but really the program is very uh, international, almost transnational in terms of uh, uh, job opportunities. How does it work? We have 380 hours of courses over five terms, and um, the program starts in, in uh, France, in Sergi, which is the historical campus of uh, ESSEC, and from September to December, students are in France, and they are um, learning the core courses, and from January to May, they come to Singapore, and they're um, actually attending the advanced courses. And I will give you a list. Following that, students have to do an internship between four to six months and a professional thesis. Professional thesis is more than just um, a report on your experience. It has to be a research piece. Uh, of course, it depends on, on the experience you had uh, during the internship, students had during the internship. But we try to um, make sure, actually, the level of, of, of uh, research is, uh, is consistent with our academic standards. Um, so overall, the program uh, will take place over 12 months, and we are a partner of the CFA. What does it mean being a partner of the CFA? Which means, actually, the program is designed uh, in a way that will give you a lot of advantage for taking the CFA level one, first. Basically, you won't need to prepare a lot for CFA level one. And second, uh, the best students in the program will get scholarships uh, from the CFA Institute to apply to level one, uh, CFA level one. That said, uh, every year I have students who are already fully CFA qualified. Might be engineers um, from India, from China, and they are already CFA level three, uh, fully qualified. So the CFA is a plus, uh, definitely, if you want, uh, if you want to, to, to do that. It's very important if you want to do corporate finance, so basically uh, m and basic investment banking, a little less so if you want to do uh, more financial markets kind of, of jobs like sell and trading structuring. Uh, in terms of courses, so you have the details, I guess you all have the brochure. So we start with fundamentals in finance and you have courses in economics, econometrics, you have courses in risk management, uh, you have courses in financial engineering. So again, as I said, the program is organized by financial instruments, um, more than by skills. And then you have elective courses, so it depends on the year, research finance, project finance, Asian financial markets, and Asian markets, and so forth. Um, a second investment banking, you might ask yourself, why French school seems to be so well connected with investment banks? Actually, um, most of the students of ESSEC, all programs included, not only this program, but all programs at ESSEC, including the Grand Ecole program, MSc in management, um, more than 30% will go into investment banks and maybe 25 will go in consulting and the others in marketing or whatever. So what does it mean? It means actually over the years, since the schools were created in um, over 100 years ago, we've been developing a lot of connection with, with investment banks and we organize major networking, networking events. 
um, such as the investment banking seminar, which is basically a recruitment fair, and it takes place in, in Sergi in France in, in October. Uh, in terms of placement, um, we are quite proud, and actually uh, it's quite remarkable because last year 70% did manage to find a job within three months and 93% within six months, uh, which is actually quite remarkable um, for the industry because the industry is not uh, is not an easy industry to um, uh, to get into initially. In terms of uh, alumni, where do they work in investment banking? So. Those numbers are basically based um, for the advanced master <coughs> overall. So it's not only the Asian track of the master, but also the French track of the master over the last three years. And you see that um, students work in uh, trading, um, yes, trading, MA for the corporate finance part. Uh, they work, uh, trading is 38%, so mostly trading. Uh, they work in a financial analyst as well. Uh, they work in project <coughs> finance, they might work in risk management. R risk management uh, is something which is um, uh, actually quite um, interesting these days for students who are keen on doing that, uh, because of course banks are looking for better ways to manage their risk. And most of the time, to be completely honest, students who join this program don't dream of be becoming risk managers. They dream of becoming traders. Okay? But not everybody can be a trader. I gave you the set of skills also it depends on the opportunities. Uh, so maybe you, you have what it takes, but you don't have the opportunity. Um, so it's, it's, it's not so easy. A risk management position can be a nice, interesting alternative in terms of careers. Uh, and you do have in this program a lot of courses on risk management, the different techniques being used by, by banks. So it's very diverse, but as you see, I would say the majority, I mean the bulk of the students work in trading, sales, and structuring. This is basically the core of the program. In, well, in terms of um, coaching and mentoring, what do we do? Uh, we do a lot in terms of career services. So we train the students um, for the tools. What we call tools will be uh, your CV, your LinkedIn profile, your cover letter. All those things um, you will get. Uh, you will get uh, training, coaching for that. You will get also training on your professional project because sometimes students approach us, and you know during the interview. Um, and they say they want to be a trader. But during the interview, we feel actually the students would be more qualified to work in sales. So it takes time for the students to acknowledge that, to accept that maybe, when the dream is to become a trader. So we work with the students to make sure that the project they have is compatible with their skills and they will be selected for, for the jobs. Um, we do also a lot of interview and assessment coaching. Um, basically, students who start the program the first thing they do is interview and assessment coaching during one week. So the program starts early September, and during one week in August, uh, students go through a seminar, quite intensive, that will give them the tool to apply for jobs. Because it, when you join the program in early September, you need to apply for a job as soon as you join the program. If you want to have a chance to be selected in London, for instance, to work in the city of London, you need to apply as soon as possible because the, the recruitment will start early September all the way to the end of November. But the way it works, the first one will have an advantage. So we want the students to apply as soon as they join the program. So to do that, you need to have the tools. Remember, if you come from engineering, if you come from a mathematical, mathematical background, if you come from a completely different background than finance, you have never worked in finance, you have no idea, actually, of what it takes. The culture is different. Um, what, what, what you need to, uh, as a, um, as a process as well, you have to do the process is completely different. Recruitment in investment banking is highly standardized, which means actually that uh, if you want to get a position uh, as a young graduate, you have to start through a very simple process that will take you from the summer to the graduate program. So you need to apply to first to a summer internship. Then once you have been selected for the summer internship, basically you might have a chance to get an offer to do a graduate program that will give you a permanent position. But in order to, 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 to be successful during the, uh, the summer internship, uh, you compete. So this is the conversion rate I mentioned before between summer and graduate. It depends on the year. Some years, they will take very few people because they have no need. Some years, 90% of the summer interns will be converted into graduates. So we have a chance to stay. So it really it depends. But we, we train you, basically, to make sure that you will be the one uh, who, will, um, who will get the offer. Um, now in terms of admission for the program, so it's a, it's a very small group, as I said initially, between 20 and 30 students. 
a small group because we don't have the resources to provide the quality of service to a larger group. Um, of course, the campus will increase, so in terms of space, we might be, really, we'll be uh, able to do it. But the industry is so specific, the coaching, the mentoring that uh, students need is so unique and demanding also in terms of resources for the school that we prefer to focus on a small group of students to make sure that those students will find jobs. Because there is nothing worse for a program director like me to recruit somebody um, and then at the end of the program there are no jobs. So it's, it's a failure for, for us, it's a failure for the students. Uh, and, and people don't commit one year of their life to program in finance, especially when you come from a different background. Likely, you do it because you want to achieve something. So we have to make sure you can achieve something. Um, in terms of profile, usually we put students with a master's degree because it's, a, it's a, an advanced master. So it's designed for people who already have a master's program, not in finance or a bachelor's degree with three years of work experience. In some cases, we also recruit only bachelor's students, only students who have only a bachelor's, and less than three years, uh, if we think they're outstanding. Um, there's a premium to use as well in this one back. Uh, I mean, I won't hide it. Uh, if students are too old, it becomes difficult to get into the industry. We ask for the TOEFL if English is not your um, uh, mother tongue. And we also, also ask for the GMAT. Um, why do we ask for the GMAT? GRE is acceptable as well, uh, because we want a standardized way to appreciate uh, all the uh, applications. Because we do applications from all over the world. Um, basically, I spend a lot of time in China and in India uh, to recruit students. Um, so we need a standardized measure, if you will, uh, benchmark that we can use. Um, I would say that we expect the scores to be around 700, uh, which is pretty standard. Uh, most Chinese will have scores much higher than that. Um, but it's, it's nothing extraordinary. If you have only the GRE, which is sometimes the case for students who come from an engineering background or mathematic background, because if you want to apply for programs in mathematics, for instance, in the States, they're going to ask you for the GRE. It's OK as well. Uh, we will look at the GRE. The next intake is September 2014. The program is uh, approved under the Finance Scholarship Program, uh, which is basically, it's basically it's approved by MS. This is what it means. Why does it matter? It matters because it means if you are Singaporean or PR, uh, you can actually apply for a scholarship. We have also scholarships um, uh, from ESSEC, what we call excellent scholarships. So they are basically P -wearers. And we have corporate scholarships. So in recent years, we have scholarship from AXA. AXA, uh, which is a very large um, French initially insurance company. So they give, uh, uh, they pay for scholarship for the students. The average starting salary in 2012 was 32,000 euros. It depends really on the, on the, on your, um, on the job you, you choose. Um, I would say in London, it's about 50,000 pounds usually would be the salary for beginners plus bonuses, um, less bonuses nowadays than in the past. Um, in Asia, usually banks tend to pay a little less, unfortunately, at this stage. Uh, the level of salary is uh, slightly lower than, than uh, in Europe or the States for the same skills. Uh, the way forward is very simple. You have uh, brochures, you have the ESSEC website, we have four sessions. The latest session is in April, April 13, and all the students are being interviewed. Uh, systematically, it's very important for us. Why? As I said, because we want to make sure you qualify for the job, uh, and that recruiters will actually select you after one year when you have completed the program. So it's very important for us to know you. Um, questions? Uh, you can send me an email, uh, and you can refer to a sec, or you can ask me any questions you have now. <coughs>